Hustle culture has created a generation of people sacrificing the most important aspects of their life for shallow, meaningless, and empty pursuits. Guys like Hormozy amass millions of views, shaming people, convincing them that they're poor only because they don't work hard enough. Just takes work, shitloads and shitloads of work. And every time I dress it up or cut a corner, I get brutally reminded by life that the work just needs doing. So yes, this is your friendly reminder that it's okay to work on weekend. If you're not hitting 10K months and posting 50 pieces of content across every single platform and living off bean burritos while sleeping under your office desk, you're a lazy piece of shit. The wisest men of the past understood what mattered in life and what didn't, and all of them embraced living slow. Epictetus was talking about this 2000 years ago. He said it much more succinctly. Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. In this video, we're going to explore why living a slow, methodical life is more important than ever and four strategies that you can implement today that will actually make you a more productive and happier human being than 99% of society. But before we dive in, I just want to introduce myself. If you're new here, I make videos on how to live a holistic and embodied soul led life. For the last decade of my life, I've been studying with some of the greatest minds in the world around holistic and embodied human development. I run a company that uh, runs retreats all around the world with three of my best friends called 13 Pines. You can check out that below. Uh, teaching men specifically how to become more embodied and holistic beings. So if you like this kind of content and you're interested in what I'm up to, go ahead and subscribe and like and hit some of the links in the description below and you'll probably find something there that's really useful for you. All right, so let's get back to the video and dive in to principle number one. So principle number one is to optimize work around your life, not the other way around. For 99% of humanity's existence, we only worked an average of 15 hours a week. I mean, your ancestors only dedicated 15 hours a week to acquiring the basic provisions needed for life, like food, water, shelter, and anything else they needed to survive. They spent the majority of their time connecting with their community, exploring new lands, enacting ceremonies and rituals, and probably eating magic mushrooms, and ultimately doing what humans are meant to do, which is enjoying life. You see, we were not created to be slaves to a system where our primary goal is to make other people absurdly wealthy. The last couple of years, I found myself getting so stressed all the time when I wasn't focusing on my business. And so I made a declaration earlier this year that I'm blocking off every single day in my calendar from 11.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. And I hold this time as sacred, as sacred as I would hold the most important client meeting in my life, except for I spend this time going to the gym or practicing jujitsu or going for a hike, anything that I can do to get me in my body and get a bit of exercise. I notice how much of a profound effect it has on my mental health, obviously on my physical health and on just my emotional well-being. It actually makes me a more productive person by taking that space in the middle of the day, by slowing everything down, getting off screens and getting into my body. Now, when most people hear this, their immediate gut reaction is that this is a product of being privileged and it's impossible to just take whatever time off they want given their circumstances in life. You can't just walk away from your job in the middle of the day or take vacation as much as you want for weeks at a time. Most people could design their life around their work if they really wanted to, but they just aren't willing to give up the luxuries and the lifestyle that they've worked so hard to build. They're stuck in the consumer hamster wheel. They believe that the more that they consume and the more that they acquire and the further they go on their trajectory of income and career capital and making moves in some corporation that somehow that's gonna make them happier. You work harder to afford a lifestyle. You end up being miserable because you work too many hours. You try to consume your way out of your misery by buying things and surrounding yourself with stuff. Then you build a bloated life and you have to pay for all these bills and that takes you back to step one. Listen, I'm not against making money at all. You should try to make as much money as possible and have as much abundance in your life as possible, but not at the expense of doing the things that you wanna do. If you really wanna live a life where your work 
fits into your lifestyle, it might mean making some sacrifices. It might mean moving out of the downtown area where you live in some expensive condo. It might mean quitting your high paying job so you can take a position where you have a little bit more autonomy on how you structure your day. When I quit my tech job in 2019, I sacrificed a massive amount of money, stock options, benefits, and career potential to go work on a farm growing vegetables and shoveling manure for minimum wage. I moved out to the country and I paid $300 a month to live in a trailer. I drove a $900 van that couldn't even pass a safety. I actually drove it without any tags. I lived way too remotely to waste my money on frivolous bullshit like shopping and all that kind of stuff. So I just had to spend my time on the farm, living in nature, cooking, reading, and really embracing the slow life. And even though I actually worked really hard on the farm, the thing is I enjoyed the work because it was a slow, productive working lifestyle. Each day I was excited to get up with the sunrise and go out into the fields and complete my task for the day. I ended up farming for two seasons and those were some of the best times of my life. And one of the main reasons I enjoyed farming in particular so much was because it exemplified the next principle of living a slow life. And that is work slowly on one thing at a time. So I was insanely excited when I first landed that tech job. At that time in my life, given my experience and where I was at, it felt like a dream job. I got to work from home. They furnished my home office. And even though it was a entry level position, I knew that the potential for my growth in that career field was absolutely immense. So I would spend my entire day supporting our merchants via phone or email or through a chat system, helping them solve problems related to running and setting up their e-commerce stores. I would be having three separate conversations with customers at once in the chat system. I'd be flipping back and forth between dozens and dozens of tabs, and I basically had no downtime. As soon as I ended one chat or one call, another one would come through. By the time I wrapped up at the end of every day, I was completely fried. It was like I was brain dead. I couldn't do anything. All I could do was lay around and recover. And after about a year of working there, I actually began to notice some really significant shifts in my thought patterns. It's like even when I wasn't working, my attention span had become absolute trash. It felt like I was frantically flickering through tabs all the time, like I was on meth or something like that. I was totally burnt out and I knew that I needed to quit. So even though it made zero sense financially and I was giving up all this potential career growth and stock options and all the perks that you get with having a job like that, it didn't really matter because my mental health was more important to me. So I went and decided to get a job on a farm. Sometimes I would spend an entire day just weeding a bed of carrots or an entire afternoon just picking tomatoes. I'd be sitting there in the dirt, soaking in the sun, my mind would just be wandering or I'd be having a conversation with one of my coworkers. And these were brilliant experiences. My whole system, my whole nervous system was able to relax and just get into a complete flow state. The myth of hustle culture and multitasking and doing a million things at once to be more efficient and productive is just absolute bullshit. It actually ends up having the opposite effect. Not only does the quality of your work suffer because your mind is disparate in too many different places, but it in further ingrains and trains your brain into a pattern of distraction. So when I had to farm, it forced me to focus at one thing at a time. I had to be meticulous and thorough with exactly what I was doing. If you cut corners farming, your crops don't grow. And if your crops don't grow, you don't make any money. So even though I stopped that job years ago, I took the principles and that idea with me into the work that I do today. So because writing is the foundation of everything I create in this business, including the script for this video, my newsletter, the programs that I create, etc., it's really important that I can write fully present, undistracted, so I can think as deep as possible. So when I sit down to write, I use this little $40 timer. Basically what it does is I can set it for an hour and then I plank it on the desk, it's right in front of me. I put my phone on do not disturb. I open something called the Hemingway app, which blocks all the distractions. And all I do is focus on writing 
until this little timer goes off. And I find these moments of deep work when I'm completely absorbed in the task at hand, but not only like super rich and deeply satisfying, but they actually rejuvenate me. I find that when I'm jumping from tab to tab and picking up my phone and answering DMs and looking and scrolling reels and all that shit, I lose energy, even though I'm in a passive state of just receiving, it kind of sucks the life out of me. As opposed to actually thinking really hard and having to structure ideas and put them together in an elegant way, you think that would be exhausting, but it actually is life giving. And I believe it's because our brains love to focus on thinking hard. When I get into that state and my brain knows it's only here for one task and that is to ideate and get it out on paper, the quality of my writing increases exponentially. There are a million reasons to check our phone and our emails and get pulled away into multitasking, but choosing to do one thing at a time is a revolutionary act. All right, let's move on to principle number three. Own less, experience more. I made one of the best decisions of my life when I was 25 years old. I sold nearly everything I owned, minus whatever I could fit into a 50 liter backpack, and I went off and spent a year traveling across the world, across three continents, I went to eight countries. And there is no other period of time in my life that I reflect on more fondly than that trip. It fundamentally and completely changed me. Right before I went on that trip, I sold my beloved car that I had just finished paying off because I wanted to have as much money as possible in my bank account so I didn't have to worry about it when I was traveling. And despite working so hard to afford that car and to pay it all off in less than a year, once I sold it, I actually never thought about it again. I've never spent one moment reflecting on that car or missing it or cherishing my memories of that car. But what I do reflect on almost every day, if not a few times a week, are the amazing memories and experiences that selling that car afforded me. All the money, all the proceeds from that car allowed me to do so many more things while I was traveling. It opened so many more experiences for me. For example, it paid for a yoga teacher training certification in Cali, Colombia, where I ended up spending a few months living at a Hare Krishna ashram. It paid for a nine day ayahuasca retreat deep in the Peruvian Amazon jungle with Shipibo healers, which changed the course of my life forever. I actually ended up going back to that retreat center, teaching yoga there and living there for four months. It paid for numerous tracks and hostels and flights and adventures all the way from Morocco to Bolivia. Over the years, I've learned that every single thing I purchase takes some amount of mental real estate in my head and that leads to a more frantic lifestyle. I have to think about the condition of the item. I have to think about where I'm going to store it. I have to think about whether I'm going to use it or not. Eventually, if your life gets bloated enough, managing your stuff becomes a full time job and this kills the potential to put your energy into actually living your life. So if you feel like your life is bloated with a bunch of stuff and you're committed to living a slower life, I encourage you to take on these two practices. So the first practice is to put everything that you own into boxes, everything. And then when you take something out to use it, you can leave it out. And after 30 days of living out of your boxes, you will get rid of everything that is left over in the boxes. If you didn't need it in the last 30 days, you probably don't need it at all. The second practice that I encourage you to take on is to make a deal with yourself that every time you buy something new, you will get rid of two things. Not only will this significantly reduce the amount of stuff that you own, but knowing that you're gonna have to sacrifice two things to get something new will have you seriously consider how badly you actually need it. And I guarantee, if you take on a more minimalistic, slower lifestyle and prioritize doing things instead of owning things, the quality of your life will improve immensely. Not only that, but at the end of your life, should you die, your family will be much less burdened dealing with all the useless shit that you hoarded. And that leads us to our last point. Review your life from your deathbed. One of the stupidest things that humans do is we assume we're going to have a long life. I've had enough people around me die under the age of 30. It's kind of weird. I've had friends, multiple people I know murdered in their early 20s, lots of fentanyl and drug overdoses. Uh, but every single time this happens, it just reminds me like, oh shit, that could be me tomorrow. If you spent your life trying to hustle your way to success, never spending time with your friends or family or enjoying life and just being absorbed in your phone all the time. And then one day you just randomly fucking died. 
Could you honestly say that you were successful? There's a really famous book, probably lots of other videos and YouTubers have quoted it, but it's worth mentioning. It's Bronnie Ware's top five regrets of the dying. And the top two regrets from people on their deathbed were, I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself not the life others expected of me and i wish that i hadn't worked so hard if you're really honest with yourself the whole reason that you're hustling is because of what other people are going to think of you like we live in this sick toxic culture where the harder we work the more valuable that we are perceived and we end up digressing so far away from what we actually want to do and we're so deeply programmed to be and act in ways that we normally wouldn't if we weren't so deeply programmed by the matrix that we end up living our entire lives trying to appease other people we try to look good because that's what we think they would appreciate without ever considering what we actually want for ourselves Five thousand people told this woman that they wish they hadn't worked so hard in their life i would take advice from people on their deathbed who have been here a lot longer than we have i mean you had a one in four trillion chance of being born with those odds do you really want to spend your life trying to be the best at consuming things to never stop to take life in to letting it all be a blur while you hurdle faster and faster towards your grave when you wake up tomorrow assume it's your last day alive would you still blast through your day without taking any time to slow down and enjoy your coffee in the morning or would you maybe just take a walk outside leave your phone at home Watch the setting sun knowing that it might be your last. Would you have a heartfelt conversation with your sister or your mother or your dad or your partner and just really be with them for the first time, probably ever without the endless idea that you could be somewhere else or doing something more productive. What makes life worth living is not the accomplishments. It's not the consumption. It's not the endless desire for more. It's not the cloud. It's not looking good. It's not buying new shit. It's those timeless moments that could never be recreated. It's the mist of a waterfall hitting our face. It's the setting or rising of a sun on the beach after a perfect, beautiful day. It's those slow mornings where we have nowhere to be and nothing to do but be here right now. There is absolutely nowhere to hustle to. The only life that you have is happening right now. The only question is, are you finally going to slow down and allow yourself to soak it all in? Hey y'all, thanks for watching this video. If you liked this and you made it this far, I imagine you did, go ahead, like this, comment, let me know, like what else are you taking on in your life to slow things down? What resonated with you in this? What do you wanna hear more about? Let me know, I read and respond to every single comment. And of course, jump on the newsletter if you're interested in learning how to become more of a holistic, embodied, and soul-led human being. I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, so there's a link to that in the description as well. So I appreciate you making it this far, and as always, we'll see you next time, and stay sovereign.